Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So this is the last word we're gonna have on the Rock Crusher for a while now, at least until after this coming winter. And lots of frequently asked questions about it. Um, enough so that I decided it was worth just doing another episode regarding the answers to those questions. Um, first off, probably the most common. Yes, Wiley Coyote, I realize that. Yeah, um, after about the 50th time reading that, I was kind of, all right, let's move on. <laughs> okay, all kidding aside, a few of those were pretty good. So just to catch you up on all that I've done, which is not much, uh, none of these oil boxes were covered. This one, I know it was this one, kind of had a cover on. I just removed them all, and we put some, some boards across with some flat stone. Okay, uh, the irony. And I filled all of them with diesel fuel yesterday. You can see we've got a little bit of seepage starting to run down on this side, but not much. That's still just about as full as it was when I left yesterday. This one, however, we've got a pretty good film of diesel is starting to wick down between the uh, the upper bearing shell and that shaft. So that has went down quite a bit. We're just gonna leave those set for now. And for the eccentric boxes, those still had some of the um, the material, like the, the felt cloth material for trapping the oil. I threw some diesel in each one of those and it ran out the journals almost immediately. Both of those have completely ran out. You can even see where it, yeah, it's coming down right here. You can see the stain. So I'm gonna throw some thicker oil in each one of those when I get done here. And I'm just gonna let the diesel sit and percolate in those two right there. But as far as uh, answering some of the more common questions, we'll just go down to the manual here. And oh, and for one Kyle Crest, yes, the belt pulley is back on. I ran this up here yesterday and just threw it back on real quick. So Kyle Crest, you can stop texting me every four hours wondering where's the belt pulley. The belt pulley's back on. So it's gonna work pretty well for keeping the wind off of the book. Um, actually, all the pertinent specs are in this manual and for actually all the crushers they made. Um, go back to the front of it here. It's really something, kind of an early view of the um, the old Acme crusher line at the factory. I would have loved to have walked around that place in its heyday. Just an interesting comparison. There is an Acme number six showing comparative size, guy standing next to it. And here is a number 30D, the guy standing next to that. And that's not even as big as they made. Here we found the Style D crushers, which is what we have right here. And specifications over here, we've got the nine and a half D, which is like the third size from the smallest. They went all the way up to 42D, which weighed 95,000 pounds. That 30D up here was 49.3. So roughly twice the size of that biggest one that we just looked at. Uh, crazy just to think of it. But everyone was wondering what I'm going to power this with. Yes, I'm keeping the flat belt drive and they have a pretty good breakdown of the different types of power. Now bear in mind, this was copyrighted in 1927. So we're taking into account the tech of that day. Average power required for our nine and a half D, third column down, steam or diesel is 20 horsepower. Gasoline would be 40 horsepower or electric motor, 30 horsepower. And that's because torque is king. So, you know, steam is probably number one for torque output, diesel's a solid second. Um, gasoline power of the day, it probably takes 40 horsepower rating to get the amount of torque to actually run these. So that means I could run it with the Cat D2 belt pulley. We could run it with the Farmall Super M belt pulley. RD6 I think would be absolute best. I would love to hear that three banger just lugging away behind this thing. And for speed at which it operates, we'll go into the other book that came with it. And there was some rather eye-opening information in here. Uh, things I didn't know, because I've never really heard one of these old crushers run very fast at a tractor show. They've just kind of been like, crunch, 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 about that speed right there. Uh, turns out they were built to run a lot faster in the proper settings. So right here, directions for operating Acme crushers, etc. Speed of crusher should be from 275 to 325 revolutions per minute, depending upon how solid the crusher is erected. That is ripping for one of these things. Oh, that, that, that's some speed. Um, one interesting uh, footnote in here though, it says, crusher should always be kept full of stone when running at full speed, which makes a lot of sense because you have a lot of motion going on and all of these pieces are massive. Uh, 
It breaks down how to set the tension spring on top of the eccentric roll because your bearings are only upper half shells right there and right there. Very similar to railroad uh, train car truck wheels or truck axles of the day. And the lower portions that are missing there and there were just the felt rolls that were to accumulate the oil, hold it against the shaft, redistribute it as this was spinning round and around. And yes, these were supposed to have oil in the boxes originally. They had converted them to grease fitting. I took those fittings out before I threw the diesel in. And yeah, the spring tension up top keeps this wheel setting down on the eccentric so that it doesn't start jumping and hammering. Same with these two springs here and here. There are appropriate tension settings to keep everything tight so that when this is going chunk, 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 chunk like crazy, you don't have hopping and hammering and banging and it makes sense we'd need to keep that hopper box full because that's going to be more of a cushion to the mechanism. I'll never run it that fast. I'll tell you right now, we're just going to do it fast enough, crush some stone, have some fun. Another very common question was how big of stone can go into this? So barring the screens and everything they have up here, which at first I thought it was maybe to be a size limiter, but then a couple people in the comment section pointed out, and I believe rightly so, these were most likely in, put in place to catch anything that may want to come shooting up and out of here. Uh, makes a lot of sense, but they have those specifications in here as well. So the nine and a half D, Receiving opening in inches, 11 by 18. So we had 11 inches this way, 18 inches that way, and without these limiting screens placed in, in theory, anything that could get down in there should go. Granted, you have your, your fixed jaw, sits out a little bit more, takes up some of that space. I'm saying probably rocks up to a foot in diameter could go in easily. And we have tons per hour with jaws set at two inches. This thing could do 16 to 24 tons of material output per hour at full capacity. And when they say jaws set at two inches, that means looking down in the bottom where you can see that light coming through down there, you've got about a two inch gap and that's set. That is non-adjustable. Well, I shouldn't say that. There are some plates that can go behind these jaws, but for the most part, you got a two inch gap down at the bottom right there. And a lot of people talked about how they have seen stones come shooting up out of the tops of these before. If you get like a particularly hard one or round one and the jaws can't grab it and crunch it. And that oftentimes is a result of these, um, these bumps on the jaws getting worn and then you get more rounded surfaces, some of your clearances increase. And instead of, you know, a sharp point on a sharp point crunching and fracturing that stone, they are more, they're on more rounded edges and it's more apt to when it squeezes together just shoot it up and out so like I showed in the original walk around this one's had a lot of hard facing put on I believe I'm gonna have to do the same thing to this one that's all right because I buy these things for what I call the YouTube factor which means I generate revenue by watch minutes you get watch minutes by having lots of episodes if I buy something that needs work right off the bat that's where I generate the revenue. If I bought something that was already in otherwise good condition and really didn't need a lot of episodes to get up and running, I've lost money because I can't recoup that investment. You buy something that's a little bit rougher like this to start with, you can buy into it low, you can generate a lot of videos, a lot of watch minutes when you're doing the rebuild on it, and pretty soon you're sitting right by the end of it. That's the nature of the beast, that's how the system works. And I mean, working on things is just as fun as using them, I think, so. I just, I love it. Love this old machine. So we're just about done here, but just some other interesting things in this book. They had double tailings crushers where they just placed two of them front to front, joined them together on one solid frame, and you would drive it on the belt pulley here, and then another belt went flywheel to flywheel to drive the other side. You would double your capacity with not a lot more expense and not a lot more space required. Another interesting thing, we have different styles of plates that were available. We have some that taper down and get rid of the serrations for finer crushing. We have the standard plates like we have in it right now, deep corrugated plates for crushing flat stone. Um, everything had a specific purpose and yeah, um, we have just the regular stationary ones in here, just the standard, which is all we need. All kinds of other things they gave you, well, we have mounted skids with elevator kits that you could have got that's all driven well basically you drive the flat belt here and then you got another flat belt that goes off the other side drives your conveyor setup 
We had mounted gooseneck arch front draw carts for them. And here's probably the most miserable machine I've ever seen in my life. A self-propelled version and they used a Fordson tractor. I mean, a Fordson because it was so cheap. Uh, those things were built without brakes. I don't know how you would maneuver, navigate, especially trying to drive this thing down into a pit. I don't know. But it's kind of a slick setup really because I said with the throw of a clutch, you can either make the tractor drive the unit or turn it stationary and the tractor provides power via this chain to the crusher and also to the elevator. Um, lots of interesting old things. Uh, they, they built complete plants that they would provide. I mean, the Acme company was huge. Our railroad cars, conveyors, um, They had trommels up inside of plants. Um, pretty much the sky's the limit. You name it, it's listed in here. Even give you complete breakdowns and sketches on how to build your bins and your plants and your hoppers. I mean, it's an instruction book. Whatever you wanted to make, boom, it's in here. So that's really everything I had for answering the most frequently asked questions about the crusher. This was completely unexpected. I didn't plan on having a rock crusher at this point in time at all, and I surely didn't plan on it taking up most of last week to get it hauled out of the other property and placed here. Definitely put me behind this time of year because you start running like crazy getting ready for winter. I had planned on finishing up from plow day and tidying up the field all this last week when the weather was nice, ended up hauling that instead. I. I don't really care because uh, I'm just, I'm tickled to have it. I've always wanted to have a crusher and never had the opportunity at one like I had here. So happy about that. But it's gonna sit out here at least all winter long because I already had the winter pretty well booked up with projects to begin with. So thanks for watching everybody. This is the last you'll see of this for this year for sure. And uh, on to other things. Hope to see you all back again.